When I thought about, oh, coming here to a library, I was like, oh. When I think about librarians and libraries, I think about the reading and the writing in terms of libraries. And what you're about to see is that they refer to me as the MacGyver or MacGyva or MacGyvet of assistive technology. And I talk about growing up in Wisconsin being one of 10 kids and three of us being diagnosed with learning disabilities and on top of learning disability also being diagnosed with Tourette syndrome. And just the challenges with the whole reading and writing piece. And little did I know that Later on, I would be writing books <laughs> and about making hundreds and thousands of assistive technology solutions in minutes. And it was great listening to Sajay's presentation. He gave us a really nice overview of assistive technology across all functional limitations, vision, hearing, mobility, grasping, communication. Um, but what I noticed in Sajay's presentation was that many of these technologies that he shared were electronic kinds of technologies. And oftentimes, people think of the word technology, assistive technology, as something electronic, something that uses a computer. So I'm going to talk about the 80% of assistive technology that does not require any electronic device. So I, I hope to inspire you to think about assistive technology more broad on all domains of, of technology across the lifespan. So first we're going to start off with a YouTube clip that um, ran in uh, 288 TV stations throughout the country in 2016 during the election. Because what was happening then was we get every year, or every two years, we get a nice bumper crop of election signs. And election signs are made out of corrugated plastic, and there's thousands of devices that you can make with corrugated plastic. So let's take a look at this clip. It's called the Obamaline, or Bookaline. I started making things so, out of recycled bigger. real estate signs, and then I noticed hey, these election signs are made out of corrugated plastic. Oh my gosh, I wonder what they do with all these discarded election signs. Usually at the end of an election, a lot of people just throw them out, give them back to the candidate. But Therese put out that she will take all the corrugated plastic, which is what the signs are made of, and reuse those to create assistive technologies for people who might need them. So we flip it over, so now the Velcro part, the one of the Velcro first things that was made with election signs was what was called the Eileen, and it's a device for leaning your iPad. Today, we have 30 occupational therapy students who will be making these Eileens, and the Eileens will be given away to people with disabilities. When we're working with individuals who experience a variety of disabilities, assistive technology is really expensive, and here is a way to create thousands and thousands of devices and save millions of dollars using discarded election signs. Oh, it's really simple to make these. It's four score lines, some Velcro, some tape. It's a really easy and really functional product that you could give to a bunch of different people. Eureka! <laughs> Hello! Well, Marika wanted to be able to use her cell phone independently, and so we decided that it would be best to make a mount for her. The phone's going to slide in and out. Okay, great. We at University of New Hampshire definitely have moved to recycling and reusing things, and that's really what it's all about. So she could answer the phone independently. I think teaching our students about reusing election signs not only teaches them about sustainability, not only teaches them about making assistive technology, but it teaches them to look around their environment, look at everyday items that can be used in extraordinary ways. So after a couple of months after this aired, um, or, and immediately after it aired, the phone was ringing off the wall. I say everybody wanted to donate all their election signs and corrugated plastic. And remember those red signs? Those are Carly Fiorini's signs, the red and white ones. She dropped out of the election very early. And so I called him up and I said, you know, I'm really sorry about your candidate. Um, uh, but could I have her signs, right? <laughs> and, 
And they said, um, no, you cannot. She might run for president again. And I was like, okay. Well, last year, I get a call from the Farini campaign. They said she's not going to run for president again. They have a semi-tractor trailer load of corrugated. And, and these are the four foot by eight foot sheets. Do you want them? I said, sure. Well, do you know how much fits in a semi-tractor trailer load? <laughs> So across Durham, every attic, basement, I have this stuffed, I've got them across in tunnels on campus in attics and uh, bookcases, everywhere you can imagine. And there's signs that say, do not destroy. Dr. Wilkham uses these to make devices for people with disabilities. Well, then what happened, I was in Washington, D.C., and I was at a state director's conference, and there was a White House aide up on stage. And I thought, oh, you know, I made this Obama lean. It's, it's a book holder. Everything has the I lean. I lean my iPad. I lean my book, right? So that, that Obama lean was made out of his election sign. And what it does is it's just a, a portable, collapsible um, book holder. Just show you that here. So just something very simple, very easy um, to carry, to transport. Again, it's made out of corrugated plastic. So I ran up the aisle with the Obama lean that was made out of his signs, and I had said, you know, uh, and the White House aide looks down and goes, yeah, like I'm interrupting her, and I said, um, I've got this Obama lean. Um, could you, could you give this to President Obama? It's, it's, it's made out of his signs from 2012. And she stops, and then she looks down, because the Associated Press did this whole article, and she goes, you're that crazy lady who's cutting up all those signs. <laughs> and I went, yeah, that's me, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So uh, she said, sure, she'd be happy to give it to President Obama. So I was like, wow. Well, two months later, I get this awesome letter from President Obama with the White House seal, and I'm like, wow, and he, he thanks me, and he said that when he was in Chicago, they would repurpose things, and I didn't know he was a maker, you know, it was like really cool. So I framed his letter with a signature in the White House seal, next to a picture of the Obama lean. So then another two months goes by, and I get a call from the White House. President Obama would like you to come to the White House and be on this panel on technology and disability. I was like, wow, that is, wow, that is so awesome. And then they said, uh, but we need to do a background check. Everybody has to be fully vetted before you're allowed inside the White House. Well, you see, um, I travel all over the world with pipe and timing devices and wires, and so I have three FBI incident reports at TSA <laughs> for carrying unusual items because I'm a MacGyver. I'm, I teach switch making, and evidently my momentary switches are the same way you teach people how to make improvised explosive devices. And <laughs> So I'm, I didn't hear back from the White House, so I'm thinking, oh, I didn't pass the background check. They found my FBI file. So my daughter said, Mom, where, where are you going to be on election day? So I pull out my calendar and I said, oh, it says I'm supposed to be at the White House the day before election and election day. She goes, you are not. I said, I didn't say anything to anybody because I didn't want to be embarrassed when, they, when I'd have to say, yeah, I didn't pass a background check. So we laughed and I said I never heard back from them. Well, the next day the phone rang. It was the White House. They said, we are so sorry, somebody was supposed to call you, you better get on a plane and get here, we're expecting you to be on stage at 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. <laughs> and so, I'm running around and I'm not watching anything with the news, right? So I'm so excited and I've got this video that you just saw and I'm gonna show that. And, and I get up on the stage and it's, it's like really awesome because that is the stage when they do the White House briefings and stuff in that room, right? And then there's, it's being broadcast live throughout the US and in my mind I keep thinking, okay, any moment President Obama is gonna come out and I get to shake hands with the President of the United States. Well, I keep looking and Obama isn't coming out. 
So I'm waiting. So now they've got me in the middle of this panel, and to the right of me is Amazon and AT&T and Apple, and they're talking nanotechnologies, and we've got Hewlett Packard. I'm in the middle, and I'm like, oh, I got some duct tape, and uh, uh, let me show you what we're doing with uh, corrugated plastic, right? <laughs> I felt a little out of place. But everyone really enjoyed the whole thing on um, the corrugated plastic and the fact that it was, it was 2012 signs, not 2016 signs. We weren't cutting up the, the, the original ones. Well, then my phone is vibrating, vibrating. And in our family, if somebody tries to call you three times in a row, it means it's an emergency. You need to pick up. So I can't, I'm live and it's vibrating. So I get off stage, right? And I pull my phone out and I can't believe what I see. It is my daughter with President Obama two blocks from my house in Durham. <laughs> I'm at the White House and she's with the president and she said, mom, I was the first in line. I wanted to get my picture taken with him. I didn't want to tell you and burst your bubble, but you know, I'm with the president. <laughs> because it was a tight election, right? And President Obama was on campus campaigning for Hillary the day before the election. So I never got to shake hands. She got to shake hands with him. <laughs> and so it's a shared story that we, we talk about, about be, me being in the White House and her being with the president in my hometown two blocks away. So, okay, now I want to show you things that are inspired by looking at the world differently and looking at the world upside down, inside out, and backwards. And so we're gonna flip it and I'm gonna challenge you to think about things very, very differently. First of all, this is a, my, the cover for my new book. And it's great because all I want to do is just make stuff and love people, right? So I thought that would be a really good title for a book, Make Stuff and Love People. And it's about 2,000, we're up to, yeah, a couple thousand video clips of, of how-to video clips. But usually a lot of the inventions that I have created have all been inspired by somebody with a disability that needs something. And this is Morgan. Morgan is a mechanical engineering student, and he was tired of people carrying his coffee. And he said, can you come up with a way that I could go to Vinny's cart, get my own cup of coffee, and carry it to class? And then I wouldn't have to ask somebody to carry my coffee. And so I quickly created this little solution that the cup drops in. Well, then I made it for wheelchairs, and I made it for walkers, and uh, crutches, and you know, canes. And it became pretty, pretty popular. Well, then I was at a sporting event, and you're trying to figure out, well, where do you put your beverage, right? Do you put it right down on the concrete there? And so I came up with this solution. Um, Body-worn, hands-free, right? So it's pretty simple. It's using a product that's called Velcro brand One Wrap. And it's got hook hey, on one side. Hey, check this out. Another way on the that other. you can carry your beverage using this rapid strap kit. So I go really fast. See how fast I can make this, right? <laughs> That's what I like about, uh, so it's just putting two pieces together. Tie off. And then Velcro um, sells this particular product, so you can make a strap really fast. Uh, one wrap. Well then. It's just attached to the rapid strap kit. I got this other idea. Cable ties, so very, very simple and easy to do. This next picture I'm going to show you is how all of you can get six-pack abs in five minutes or less. All right? There, six-pack abs, five minutes or less. All right? I'm thinking, man, if I can get one beverage, geez, I could get a whole six-pack underneath my jacket. So I decided I'm on a first-name basis now with TSA out of Manchester Airport. And one of the supervisors' name is Colleen, um, who wrote me up on, because I was, well, when you're doing a switch-making workshop, you don't want batteries to be jostling around in your suitcase and touching anything metal. So I put a piece of duct tape around the 9-volt and put it in my pair of socks. It's the safest way to transport batteries for switch-making. 
Anyways, I go, Colleen, Colleen, can I get through with this? You know, so, all right. The other thing that motivates is, you know, there's a lot of children out there with very complex medical needs, and this child is on a ventilator. And the children who come into the classrooms who are on ventilators, they have a nurse with them at all times, and they're very medically fragile. Everybody's walking around on, you know, like eggshells because nobody wants to bump it, the tubing or anything because the, he, his life depends on it. But these poor children, they don't often get out of the wheelchair. They don't get belly time, all of that. And they're often, they just sit in the chair. And when I went into this classroom, I saw somebody holding an iPad in front of this child and was rocking back and forth. And then trays, they only had one tray to be able to share with everybody in the school of all the children who use a wheelchair. And so I came up with a way to quickly make a tray in five minutes or less and attach it. But then looking at taking this lock line material, so those of you who can't see back there, this is lock line, it's just a bunch of ball and sockets and you can bend it, shape it in many different ways. And so this is now the first time he is independent in using okay, you got an iPad. Do that. Ready, wow. What do you think, Ready, line. What do you think, Mom? Yeah. Yeah, because he's always flying stuff. So the mom says, because he's always flying stuff. And so the concept of doing a cantilever and turning the elbows upside down, so if you push on it, it pushes back, of looking at it differently and these quicker clamps that you can get at Home Depot or Lowe's for five bucks a clamp, you can do all sorts of amazing things. Well, then I looked at, I took the iPad off and look what he started to do, okay? No, yeah, look at that. Teachers just love the sound. <laughs> and I thought, oh, you know what? I could turn that into a steering wheel, right? I could turn that chair into a race car. I could do virtual race car driving. You know, that giving him something to grab onto, something to move, something to do. And so there's a project that's called Go Baby Go. And they take over the chairs and they do all sorts of really cool things. Here on campus there's a group called Magic Wheelchair and they do phenomenal things as well. Then this little boy um, with autism, and so they talk about when he goes to the library or when he goes to the classroom, he's always walking around and he will never sit down, right? Just walk, 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 walk. So they wanted me to put all these objects up on a table because he refuses to sit in a chair. So I clamped everything onto the tables and he came into the library and he started going wham, wham, started knocking everything off. And I thought, now what's going on here? Because it's pretty much nonverbal, and he wouldn't, he was afraid of tables. I thought that was interesting. And if you did get him in a, into a chair, it had to be far away from the table. So then I thought, well, what if I bring the iPad off outward, cantilever, bring it outward? Would he interact with that iPad if it comes out? So I did that. And this is his first time. He sat down for an entire hour, and he loves yeah, piano music. Yeah. So he just started into, we got all the piano apps. But it was that simple, and people came into the classroom and to the library, they were like, how did you get him to sit, right? And I said, by not making him slide the chair up underneath the table, have the technology go to him. Um, this little girl was adopted from Africa and did not speak English and uses an app that's called Touch Chat and she is just a whiz and needed something really fast that we could attach to the table so she could use her iPad easier and quicker. And then I figured out because Lockline will spin around, so what I did was I used a product called Instamorph to keep it from rotating. So now this whole thing slides on and off and figured out this new way to make a removable mount for people on the fly. So here's another quick grip clamp. And this is a student freshman in college looking at ways of interacting. So her arm's always in this position. 
she can't do this. Her body will not cooperate in that direction. Then plates. I got obsessed with plastic microwavable plates. Oh, all the things that you can do with a plate and turning it upside down. I thought I could take a flagpole bracket and I could put it on a plate and I could turn it upside down. I could put other things on plates upside down. I could make a sushi Susan. And this is for, this is Tony Jackson. He's um, on campus. He has arthrogoposis, no use of his arms or legs. And I took two microwavable plates, turned them upside down, made a little lazy Susan. He can take his time. I know, but I'm not. He's not. I'm not. Yes. Game changer. So this is using, again, Carly Fiorini's signs and sliding the forks in. And then um, I used the lock line material and corner guard from the wallpaper department and made something that just spinned around. And so that was kind of cool. Well, now, what do you think this is? Again, I want you to think, turn it upside down. If you turn it upside down, what do you think it would be? It's a soupy Susan. There we go. <laughs> so um, last year I was teaching tech camp and we had these fourth graders and fourth graders are wicked smart. Also four year olds are amazing, right? They ask questions. These fourth graders in tech camp said, well, what if, what if Tony wanted to drink soup? How would he do soup? And I thought, wow, that's a really, that's a really good question. And so I wanted something portable that would fit in the pocket, something that could collapse, easy to transport. So here again, we have a quick grip clamp, then a piece of PVC pipe that spins around. And then this is central board and just cutting out the holes for these, um, I guess they tell me that these are jello shot things. I don't know what a jello shot is, but anyways. So, and you can rotate it, right? So, rotating it with your lip again. Hey, check out my soupy Susan. So, um, I can grab the cup, put back, and drop it in, go to the next one, next one, next one. So, then I looked at, okay, can I make a sushi Susan even better, faster, easier? So I found out that the partitions in between the corrugated plastic, all I have to do is just do a little snip and I can slide spoons and forks right in there. So now this is even faster and simpler to give somebody hands-free eating on the fly with a spring clip. Then I thought, what if I take flagpole brackets and I turn them upside down, right? And I put them together, now I can mount a Black & Decker cordless leaf blower on the footrest of a chair. So this is over, um, this is also showing how I can take a flagpole bracket, turn it upside down, and turn it into um, a cup holder, um, uh, a tabletop, mount it onto the wheelchair. So here it is, here's the cordless one, and this is um, Thad, and Thad uses his chin and he can control the wheelchair with his chin. So now I thought, hey, I said, you know what? Out in front of Hewitt, there's all these seeds. Why don't you blow those off the sidewalk? So. Again, something really simple. Or could I take two flagpole brackets, put them together, and now I got a fishing pole holder. Now, this particular student wants to be a surgeon, and she has cerebral palsy, and she is also experiences deafness. And so I took the flagpole bracket, turned it upside down, put it on that plastic plate, that upside down microwavable plate, because you can bend it and slide it underneath, and using an app that's called AAC Flip Writer, um, she's able to type, and it will show up on both sides of the screen. So here she is communicating with Diana, and is you can okay? see she's sitting on the plate, the plate slides, because we have our body weight, and our body weight can be used to support objects. Yes. So besides 
going to school, <laughs> what do you like to do for fun? So did you see what just happened? The microphone, voice recognition. When she sees people's lips moving, she hits that microphone, and then it types it up on both sides of the screen. Something really simple, an app that's only a few bucks. Then looking at children and early intervention and how can I mount an iPad onto a little walker and coming up with all different strategies, <laughs> ways for Whoa. children to be able to interact it is. with disabilities. Um, cup holders of mm -hmm. how can I mount a cup holder very quickly on the side of a chair and that rotates back. So that being something simple. Holding pages open. If you only have the use of one hand, how would you hold the pages of a book open? So I made this little spring clip Angle that when she turns the page. That being too high up. Yeah. But for so like watch. reading so on So she your turns lap. the page yeah. and now it slides yeah, in that, and that the attachment just holds it in place for her. Tabletop or a tray. Yep. And this is, is, um, is good. Okay. So turn the page. I want to see how it slides in to that clip. Okay. So these spring clips, I thought, you know what? We could take, make a spring clip out of recycled election signs for hands-free eating. And this is a sandwich holder. Hey, I want to show you my really cool spring-loaded little attachment to my AT pad stand that enables people to be able to feed themselves without any hands for a sandwich. So we're just going to put this on top of here. Notice it's spring-loaded. We take the sandwich and we slide the sandwich in here. Then, what's really great, because there's not a whole lot of tension, is I can just bite on it. And as I'm eating it, I'm just gradually pulling it towards me, and it slides very easily, but yet maintains enough tension on it to hold the sandwich in place. There you so then I thought, hey, this is my virtual personal care assistant now holding a cup for you, holding a sandwich. We can also put a pizza holder on it, something for carrots and celery sticks. And then you can also use FaceTime and have a conversation with someone at the same time. And again, this is just using lock, um, lock line material for the arms and the head. Then people were asking me about throwing dice. And how do you throw dice when you have a physical disability in all these games? So I was sitting at Vinny's coffee thing out by Hewitt Hall, and I came up with this solution. Hey, check out my dice launcher. Um, all it is is just I was at a coffee shop, and I had a cup of coffee. I was drinking the coffee, and I thought, hey, what if I take this lid off, turn it upside down, push it down in there, I've got a shallow lid, and then with the corrugated plastic, I just scored it, bent it over, and I wanted something that would pivot, right? And so I just got the wire here, and put the, put the dice in there, and launch it. But think about what else you could launch. You could throw some food in there, you could put a ping pong ball, you could do food fight. of different... So then I thought, man, you could throw a hey, ball. Hey, look right? at what else you can launch. You can launch a ball, or you can launch PVC joints. Then I found this app that's called, um, what is it? Uh, dun, 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 dun. It's, it's the uh, Whip. I don't know if you've heard of the Whip app, but it, it goes on your iPhone, and I mean, you really shouldn't be whipping people, hey, but. What if you couldn't do this with the Whip app? Right? You could easily put it in your phone in here. And just pushing down, you can whip. So then, Caitlin, Caitlin came to work for us um, a little over a year ago. And Caitlin has arthrogryposis in her arms stop here. 
and we created maybe about 28 different adaptations. But she tells us this story about, as a child in physical education, she could never throw a ball, or she could never use a pair of scissors. And I was like, well, of course you can throw a ball. We'll figure something out. So I was in Wyoming, and somebody gave me one of those slap koozies that you put around um, a beverage. And I was really intrigued by these slap koozies. I thought, oh, I can turn that into a ball launcher. Right? So there you go. So I'm using binder clips. Last year we got audited because um, the auditors were saying, why are you buying all these binder clips that should be an indirect? And I go, we don't use that for paper. We're just using them for ball launchers. So we have to show the auditors that other ways of using binder clips to clip things on. And the other cool thing is that she can load this herself. So that's the part, is we want everybody to be independent to be able to use that. But now you see the binder clips. The black material is corner guard from Home Depot, and then it's just PVC pipe. And because the bottom of the slap koozie is rubber, it grips onto the pipe. Now why do you think, I'm walking around with a cell phone on my head. Why would you walk around with a cell phone on your head? So people would what? True. So we started this whole thing called, what do you want to do today? So children who are at Children's Hospital in Boston, who can't get on a bicycle, can't go on a canoe trip. So we get volunteers, and using FaceTime or Skype, um, there's a variety of different two-way things that's out there nowadays. And bicycle helmets have vents in them, and with the vents, we can quickly put a twist tie through that vent secure a cell phone on top of your head, turn on FaceTime, and now you're having a two-way real-time conversation with the kid. The kids, my daughter had volunteered and she was going too fast on the bicycle and Samuel was saying, Megan, slow down, you're going too fast. Or paddle to the left, paddle to the right, and you do whatever the person in the hospital asks you to do. So it's real-time uh, transmission. Here's something, I cut up a whole bunch of Velcro, I cut up thousands of pieces of Velcro, and it really hurts my hands, so I came up with this wicked cool solution. Hey, you know, I've been cutting up Velcro brand fasteners with a pair of scissors for a long time, and then I remember seeing on one of Velcro's website, they make this really cool tool, it's this machine with this spindle, and uh, it'll automatically cut up um, the hook and loop material. But then, one day I was sitting at my dining room table, I was looking at the chairs around my table and came up with this awesome solution, my own feeder. And so what I did was taking three quarter inch PVC pipe and then this just slides in between the spindles. And I can put on as many, or I could probably put five rolls on at one time. And see here where I've threaded through the different spindles? And then what I do to get four inches very quickly is I'll put, slide this through, I'll grab here a little bit, I'll put my finger or thumb at five because my hand is only gonna come up to the particular uh, guard here. And so then I just slide it through, cut, And I still have 10 fingers, right? So that's, that's good. <laughs> but it just spools, right? It, it grows freely, and the spindles keep the Velcro separated out. I remember my daughter said, Mom, do you think we could eat at our dining room table someday? Because it becomes my, like my workbench. Um, Sajay so was talking about AAC devices for communication. And oftentimes, children want to have both an iPad and a dedicated communication device. So how do you handle both, and how do you create a mounting solution? So at, in Northwood, at the gas station, they sell these little Spitfire torches, and I can heat a piece of acrylic in five seconds and heat it and bend it and made a thing that just slides right over the top of her communication device Where's you your so that she can now use her iPad. But in a car, how do I also take this and secure this in the car? And I notice behind the driver's seat, there's often this pocket, 
Well, guess what? I can score the corrugated plastic and put one of the wings right down in that back pocket, then rest it on her lap and secure the device using Velcro, and now she can communicate, she can use her iPad, all in the back seat. Now here's Caitlin, again, wanting to use a pair of scissors. So first of all, I've got to raise the table up. Well, those power tables are really expensive that raise up and down. So Amazon, I was able to find a nice TV tray that unfolded, and I made her a thing for the scissors. I found these are these push-top scissors. But when Caitlin would push down on the scissors, it would go skedaddle. So again, using corrugated plastic, I made a little track that these scissors drop into and just locks into place. And now Caitlin is finally able to use a pair of scissors. Now, coming up with what I call the decaline or the octoline. Hey, check out my reclinaline. You know, I did the Eileen, the Slantoline, the Bookaline, then we've got the Reclinaline. And I can just recline back in a chair, I can watch a movie, I can flip through different pictures, I can flip through websites. So I will show you a video on how to make this and the eight different things you can do with this very simple, low cost, uh, made out of corrugated plastic, collapsible, grips on two pants, you can turn it into a slant board. Um, I can use it to put my computer on. All right, we're gonna talk about the Lapaline. So the Lapaline, I came up with the Lapaline because before I had this on my lap and oftentimes this was like flipping over and I'd have to lean down or sometimes I'd have to go tippy toe to bring this up and I thought, geez, huh. Couldn't I make like a lap board or something to lean the, the notebook computer on? So that's why I came up with this and I'm calling this the Lapaline. Just one of eight things you can do with this multi-use. The Adeline. Eight things I you can do think with of this Octa, but collapsible, yeah. <laughs> portable device. Hey, it's now a couchaline. I can lay on the couch, I can lay in bed, I can watch a movie, I can flip through pictures. This is the couchaline. But wait, that's not all. We've just turned it into a bookaline to raise things up, to make it easier. Also, you could make these handy dandy little page holder clips that you can also slide in to hold the pages. There's more. This is now a slantoline. So it's a slant board. And if this is too short, we have this other little extension to come down here. So if you've got a big piece of paper and you need more space, um, it becomes a slant board. You can also use a slant board for also holding a book too. That's not all, we've got the Visaline. The Visaline raises the iPad up for people with low vision to be able to zoom in and zoom out, maybe you're on a board or using the different apps. Um, but wait, I can also do something else. If I was doing FaceTime, the cool thing about FaceTime, again, it's I'm right at direct eye level, so I can use it for a Faceline. Hey, that's not all. Look, this is a scanoline. What if you were visually impaired and somebody sent you some junk mail? How would you know and how would you read it? This is the KNFB reader. I could just put it down in front of the box and I tap on it. It takes a picture and it converts it. Circumflex. Life insurance program from see? CAP VFF. So that was when Sajay was talking about OCR scanners, these apps now that will scan and read the document right away to you is absolutely amazing that can go on your iPad. And you just have to be 12 inches away from your document. So, you know, taking this whole thing about, this is the Lapaline or the lap board, and I go to Michael's and I get some uh, foamy material. I want it to be nice and soft because then it's going to rip onto your pants. So something portable, collapsible. But if I turn it upside down like this, right? And 
then I'm going to show you. I'll go this way. So I have this. Then making a track. So this again is just Carly Fiorini's uh, election signs. You can slide that right in there. And then I can lay this on top of the table. And then it just drops right down in there. So it's just something very, very simple, easy to make in about five minutes to bring the iPad up. So iPads are also often in these cases. Same thing with these cases, right? You can take corner guard, make a track system to slide it in. Uh, turning pages is often challenging as well. So we call these page lifters. So something that your finger can hook onto when you're turning the page. And then we talk about how right. to make these. So with we're going to talk Tomia. about how to prep to make these page lifters for individuals that have a difficult time turning pages. So essentially it's corrugated plastic with foamy. And then on the library books, we want it to be removable. So we use a product that's called Remo One. It's permanent on one side and removable on the other. So we can take it off of the books later. Uh, so Jay was talking about visual, like being able to read documents. You can I'm turn show your you iPad my into a magnifier. I'm going to show you iPad for magnification. Um, and if you're like underlining to be able to see different things. Now, when I first tried just using them. So you got the idea, right? Zooming in and out with your iPad, just offsetting it. Now I'm obsessed with QR codes. I'm slapping QR codes on everything and anything. Because if I'm working with someone that has a vision impairment, all I have to do is put a dot in the lower right-hand corner. Everybody's got a smartphone. You take your smartphone out, you scan it, and it goes right to that website with more information. Or, you know, again, with 2,000 how-to video clips, it scans, and all of a sudden the video starts playing and starts talking about a particular um, project that you can make. But QR codes are really cool. So how do you put a dot in the lower right-hand corner of the QR codes? So you take a paper clip and you bend the inside piece up and snip it off, and then you mount it okay, on a we piece of a discarded dot. vinyl stuff. And the black material is called dual lock, which is interlocking plastic mushrooms. This material is VHB. So then we take VHB tape, put it on the other side, mount our paper clip, and then look at what happens when you fold it over it goes right in between the pieces of plastic. So then that way... In between the pieces of plastic. So therefore, when I have a QR code and I want to put a dot on it, I just slide it in there and push, and voila, you've got a dot in the lower right-hand corner. So making tactile overlays, like how do you make the strings pop up off of the glass on an iPad? And this is transparency film. People have been throwing hey, out transparency out. What film. What if you were visually impaired and you couldn't see the strings of the guitar? You could eat. So we use the transparency film. We lay it on top of the iPad, right? We trim off any of the excess. Then we take a Sharpie marker. And east. we draw those strings. Then we take that piece of plastic off the iPad. And we take a ballpoint pen and we trace those lines with a ballpoint pen and it pushes right down into the little piece of foamy from Michael's and thus you pick it back up to do and I'm going to on. lay this now right over the it raises up all those strings are now raised there you go you can see now they're raised up so you can feel that string that string that string same thing with books we can put a piece of hey, transparency blind, over the book. How would you be able to see this particular And we trace the image, flip it upside down, then draw, follow all those lines with a ballpoint pen, and then stick it on the page of the book using Remo One Tape. Now we have a tactile um, graphic overlay for our book pages. 
Then for students with learning disabilities, I wanted something portable. So maybe you're in the library and you've got this book and you need to read it right away because it's not available in electronic format. Take that quicker clamp, clamp it right onto the desk. And those pop sockets, I love the pop sockets on the phones because you can push down one side of the pop socket causing the iPhone to, to appear as, as, uh, on a slant. And therefore, you can use that KNFB reader um, app that I was showing you, it scans it and starts to read it. So it's a nice portable thing that you can put in your pocket and to scan and read a document on the fly. For deaf and hard of hearing, right, I have so what's I called an iPad really flipper. How to make this multi-use um, device. As you can see, we've got the board already prepped and the instructions on So I show how to make it. We use a core claw and it's really great for cutting. You can't hurt yourself with the core claw. We fold it over. Support. I have to slide my iPad in so I can create my sliding track. So now so once the again, I'm up, take but now I'm adding one more to track you. to it. Now some of the so iPad that I can flip it are back and a forth. Bit taller and wider, and so I designed this so that you can use it with a little bit taller um, iPad as well. So I'm going to drop this right on top of the iPad. Then I put another piece over the top. And the other cool thing is this is where I can be flipping it back and forth, right? So that's because cool. it writes itself, and then using notes and the and microphone, you can talk on one side, flip it when you're to the other done, person who's on the other side, this and you can communicate very quickly this back and forth. In, and now it's portable and trans it can be transported. So these pocket Eileen's, um, this uh, child has a vision impairment, so being able to zoom in and zoom out. Overbed tables, I look at these overbed tables and the nursing department was throwing them out and I was like, wait a second, you know what I could do with these? I could tip it upside down, right? And then I got a nice suspended um, holder for the iPad by taking the brown piece upside down. And then this is an artist that he has cerebral palsy and he needs to have his artwork closer to his face. And again, using a combination of PVC pipe and lock line, what we could do in five minutes to create a tray. And then looking at multi-use trays that I'm making out of lock line and these new joints that I've been finding at Home Depot. Um, for communication devices, being we able to here and mount we've something come up very with, quickly. Um, different mounting things for his iPad Pro <laughs> onto his wheelchair. In plastic. So just showing you with a quick grip clamp, a track system, and now his AAC device. So just American to give you an idea, clamp. <laughs> well, the system that he was using to support his iPad prior to this was over $1,000. It's a daisy mount, very, very expensive. Whereas this can be made out of local parts for less than $25. So then the mom sent me this picture, said that her son spends a lot of time at the hospital having all different procedures. So she turned it sideways. So I thought, oh, I've got some really great ideas um, for bed rails, is how can I take a quick up clamp, and they, a bigger quick up clamp, and create an attachment onto the end that can slide back and forth on the rail of the bar, and just very simple ways of making something for holding an iPad for bed rails. Then this is Nate. Nate was an artist and then he was in a accident in Hawaii that resulted in a very high level spinal cord injury. So Nate had to stop drawing, he couldn't draw anymore. But then the Apple Pencil came out that required very, very little movements. And so we took these industrial twist ties that you use for hanging your bicycles up, so, and then quickly made so, um, this. So um, we created this device to help me hold the stylus properly. Um, it, it's basically just an industrial twist tie that's bent around the stylus in two places. Um, it, it, the benefit of the industrial twist tie is that it's an everyday material that's easy to find. Um, it's relatively inexpensive. Um, and I can slide it onto my hand, and it gives me a very natural feel um, 
with the pencil. So this was the first picture he drew for me in our office. And now he's writing a book and doing all of his own illustrations. But just something as simple as a twist tie. So then I looked at 60 other things you can do with an industrial twist tie. You can create um, a device for feeding yourself. Um, you can see where I can also put a fork on here. This can wrap around the person's hand. Um, just with a using All right, a T-joint. I want to show um, a new way of making kind of a universe. So here we do, we put the T-joint in your hand, wrap it around. Now that wire holds your hand up from dropping, and then you just slide your fork in, right? And it grips it up there. So something wicked fast, simple. Here's this little girl, first time drawing, and she's so <laughs> proud she wants to tell her daddy. Like, Daddy, look, I'm drawing. She can do look it. Look at that pretty pink. Yes. <laughs> and feeding herself for the first time using the industrial twist tie. So you can bend it and shape it in just about any position. So also taking this whole thing here and putting this over the top of an industrial twist tie as well to raise it up. So here's an example again of how do you hang an iPad on a pole. And then my obsession with paper clips. Uh, paper clips are made out of wire. Wire transmits electricity. Wire can be attached to those little nubby styluses. And then I can take a product called Instamorph, which is really fun to work with, put that into a T-joint and make an adapted stylus. Then I started making fidget items. And when I'm happy with my fidget items, I then 3D print them. And so I create these little ways that you can take PVC pipe from the hardware store and put the little spinners together. Then I started making these tracks out of Carly Fiorini's hey, signs. let me show you what else you can do with my little thumb twiddler here. So just a nice little fidget item. A couple things I can do. I can also put this onto the table. So if I only had the use of So I'm using a product called Remo 2. It which is All a silicone, is, sticky, rubbery material, and you can remove it. But off the I table. made this whole track thing so that you could have a spinner board, right? And look what. And the idea was that children with significant disabilities cannot hold and use a traditional fidget spinner. People who um, have had a stroke cannot use a fidget spinner. So how can we create other kinds of of activities? I did here. So then it just slides out. And Remo then, two from Eccentric. I figured I can put the Remo two on there and watch. And I could stick that there, and I could stick this piece. And so this here. is the bookaline. So just by sticking this removable tape, you can create your own little board. You wouldn't even need. Now, dog treat dispensers. Um, how do you give a dog a treat if you have no use of your hands? And so I found Corner Guard at Home Depot and with the Instamorph, and I made a dog treat dispenser. He uses a mouse stick, and he pushes okay. the treat down. See. Something simple. Then arm troughs. People's arms were falling off of their armrests. And somebody said, geez, these arm troughs are like $500. Could you make some? And I said, sure. So I took, again, Carly Fiorini's signs, <laughs> scored them, bent them over, covered them with Instamorph, and attached them to the wheelchair. And so people are like, wow, that is really great. So then I looked, what else could I do with these arm troughs, right? So I was like, this lady, she couldn't bend her neck. And she was an artist. And what was the other thing? She couldn't raise her arm up and she couldn't bend her neck. So here, I've got something that she can lean her, her forearm against and then her elbow, a little cup for her elbow to rest into. And now she's back to doing artwork. Then I thought, hey, gardening, what if you couldn't hold on to a rake, right? What could you do with an arm trough on a piece of PVC pipe and then slide one of those rakes in the end, voila, got a great solution for somebody that has limited grasp. Then this is my latest from two days ago. <laughs> so um, I thought, what if I take those arm troughs and tip them upside down? Now what I've got is a nice portable armrest. So 
So I'm going to go over here to the camera. There we go. All right, so this is just made out of PVC pipe. And watch. Oh, this is not that table. All right, here's a table. <laughs> there we go. So now you can watch. Now I've got a nice armrest, right? So having an armrest by bringing the arm up, because oftentimes the armrest on your chair, your office chair or your wheelchair, doesn't come up high enough. So now using gravity, so people with ALS, I've been attaching armrests onto. So it's very, very simple. They had one that was commercially available and they were selling for $50. And so just making this one. You're on TV. <laughs> so taking, yeah, taking the arm trough, tipping it upside down over the PVC, sliding it under the table. When we break, you can come up later and play with some of these things. I brought up an assortment of stuff. That shows underneath. Here we have armrests on both sides for doing forward tasks. Ah, seat belts. Any of you five foot three or shorter, you ever get that seat belt cutting in your, I hate that, right? Check out my new invention from last week. <laughs> hey, are you tired of these seat belts getting you in the neck all the time or giving you seat belt burns across your neck because it creeps up and you're always trying to pull that darn thing? Well, I've got the perfect solution. Take a piece of Velcro brand one wrap and with the hook facing upward, overlap it with my gripper loop, so the loop on one side, rubber on the other side, attach it right here, then take your seat belt and wrap this around, just like so, and now look at this, this slides up and down, it grips onto my clothes, and voila, keeps the seat belt right across my shoulders, and I can drive safely, and no more seat belt burns across my neck. No, I love it. But wait, that's not all. For you, the Ginzu knife. No, sorry. Um, <laughs> but other things you can do in the car, like if you want to hold um, your cell phone up and attaching it to the windshield, right? Or coming up with ways. Okay, this is my last slides. All right, when I told you when we started off about seeing the world upside down, backwards, inside out, who would ever think that having dyslexia would end up being such a great gift, right? So my daughter had to go in for surgery, and they brought her out of surgery, and they took her to her room, right? And in her room, they had this overbed tray, and they had this blue thing in there. And I'm like, what the heck is that? I've never seen that. But do you know where my mind goes, you know? So the nurse comes in and says, oh, that's in case she gets sick, right? Because the anesthesia. So it's a barf bag, right? So I'm like, ew, okay. But I didn't see it as a barf bag. You know what I saw it as? If you see it upside down, what do you see? Okay, do you see it? Do you see it? Do you see it? Marge, that's what I see is Marge. <laughs> All right, well, I'm sorry. My hour went by very, very fast. Um, Thank you all so much for listening. It's later on in the day. We're going to go to Q&A. Um, but I hope that you will look at the world differently, upside down, inside out, and backwards. Thank you.